Here we have our main event on FS1, and it will be interesting. I mean, you gotta love this fight. 12-0 versus 18-1, 24 years old versus 25 years old, Brooklyn versus Baltimore. Richardson Hitchens, 12-0, 24 years old, he's 5'10", Malik Hawkins, 18-1 out of Baltimore, he's 25 years old, taller man in the ring, but the reach advantage goes to Hitchens. Hawkins has the one loss, both promoted by Mayweather Promotions. That's Floyd Mayweather, head to head. Something's gotta happen here. Hitchens and Hawkins, let's go to the ring, and Miguel Flores. Ladies and gentlemen, here in Minneapolis, Premier Boxing Champions presents the FS1 featured bout. It is promoted by TGB Promotions and Warriors Boxing in association with Mayweather Promotions. Sponsored by GEICO. Whether you rent or own, GEICO makes it easy to bundle home and car insurance. Go to GEICO.com today. This bout will be 10 rounds in the super lightweight division. Our three judges ringside are Jesse Reyes, John Mariano, and Scott Erickson. The referee in charge of the action is Mark Nelson. And now introducing first in the red corner, wearing the blue with white trunks, he weighed in at 143 and one quarter pounds. His record stands 18 victories, including 11 by knockout and just one defeat. Fighting out of Baltimore, Maryland, presenting the exciting Malik Iceman Hawkins. And now introducing his opponent across the ring in the blue corner wearing the black and gold trunks. He weighed in at 143 and one half pounds. His record stands undefeated, 12 victories, including five by knockout. Fighting out of Brooklyn, New York, presenting the talented Richardson Hitchens. All right, gentlemen, you received my instructions earlier. You both know what we expect. A good, clean fight. Obey my commands and protect yourself at all times. Touch gloves. Good luck to both of you. Again, this is a, uh, a pleasant surprise in that both are promoted by Floyd Mayweather, Mayweather Promotions, Floyd Mayweather, Leonard Ellerby. Mm -hmm. uh, and yet they're being put head to head. 12, Joe, 12 and over versus 18 and one. I like it. Hey, look, I mean. There's something at stake. <laughs> if there's a lot at stake for both of these guys. And that's why this is gonna turn out to be a great fight because they both have a lot to win and a lot to lose. Hawkins in the white trunks, Hitchens in the black trunks. Again, Hawkins, again, rare matchup of two top prospects in their prime. Uh, Hawkins had a rough 2020. He got, yeah. uh, got badly ill cutting weight for a February fight, and then he lost in October. He got stopped by Sabriel Matias. So again, he's got the one loss, but still, we see so many of these matchups with a prospect against somebody that's not going to win or is nowhere near the same level, and this seems to be two fighters who are, you know, at least very close in level and pedigree. They are. They both have the same, they, they have a very similar style, both of them. Um, they're good boxers and they're good counter punchers, uh, and they can work from the outside real well. The inside game um, is a little less defined, I would say. Uh, but they both have some good things they can do on the inside. Uh, I like uh, I like the way Hawkins and Hitchens both can work that left hand of the body when they get in close. Not as often as uh, they should, but but they do do that. That being said, um, the, uh, Hawkins when he lost that fight, it was by an, he didn't get knocked out or anything like that. It was an injured right eye, and it swelled up bad, and the doctor stopped it. So you know it, it was due to an injury, not so much as he was getting. Uh, you know, dropped and uh, counted out. So just that. Well, he was to getting say that. popped though in that fight. He so, was. He, he was. He got. He was, he was getting popped pretty good by Matias in that fight. He, he was. But you know, that's the name of the game. You're going to get popped. But that that eye injury looked pretty bad. And I'm saying I mean, I'm coming to his defense a little bit on that. You're right though. Matias was. was yeah, he's, he was a tough guy. And he was landing some hard shots on him, but he didn't quit. He didn't stop. He didn't go down. 
It was it was stopped because of an injury. So you know, can I ask you a there. crazy question, Joe? Yeah. Uh -huh. Can I ask you a crazy question? Sure. Uh, different sure. Do you like the white gloves? Like that seems to be more of an amateur thing. Do you like the white gloves at the pro level? I haven't seen that. Is it easier to maybe the judges can see scoring better? No, no. It's just a preference by the fighters. You know, before you you know uh, you, you had to wear the same colored gloves no matter what. Right, but do you uh, like it? I'm saying the white gloves. I, I don't. That, you know why? You, you know why I don't listen, like? Listen, listen. Hold on. Hang on. Hold on. Ask, you, you, ask me the question. You got to ask the, the reason I don't like the white gloves, Brian. You know why I don't like the white gloves? Because number one, why? they look bigger, okay? Uh, right. Because so the color, the black gloves are are look smaller. I like that look. And then number two, you, the blood shows up really quite a bit on the red on the white gloves. So that can be a disadvantage if yeah. it's your blood. Yeah, you need to ask a boxer that question. And boxers don't <laughs> don't care as long as it fits good. You, you know, any gloves knock, knocks knocks and. Knocks anybody out. Well, and I, I, I happen to work with boxers every agree, day of my life for a, a minute. I agree years. with Joe about <laughs> it shows the blood. Of course, it yeah, shows the blood. It's, it's white. It's the bell. <laughs> well, it's back in 2008 when Richardson Hitchens was watching WrestleMania, and he said this undefeated superhero came on, taking on the Big Show. That man's name was Floyd Mayweather, and uh, that is how he was inspired take up boxing, went on to represent, had a great amateur career, went on to represent Haiti in the 2016 Olympics in Brazil, and that is where he met his idol, Floyd Mayweather. A year later, turned pro, signed with Mayweather Promotions the following year. Uh, said Floyd called him in, flew him out to Vegas, been very hands-on in terms of his career, even had him over to the house to watch tape. Uh, you mentioned it. This is Mayweather versus Mayweather. I spoke to Leonard Ellerby this week, the CEO of Mayweather Promotions, and he said they have no problem putting their two guys against one another. He mentioned to the stakes and he said for the for the winner well big things lie ahead and for the loser he didn't have to finish the sentence guys <laughs> I, thank you uh, but isn't that amazing like he sees him good right hand there by yeah. Hitchens. Uh, you know not not watching Floyd against Chico Corrales not watching Floyd against Oscar De La Hoya not watching Floyd against Arturo Gatti but against the big show uh, who knows where you're gonna see these guys but uh, that's what Hitchens saw and he's become a top prospect. By the way, I want to add, yeah. uh, it's about time I've seen Lennox turn on Joe. I kind of like you guys. No, but, but, but see, in the, in the break, Go ahead. in the break, he apologized. <laughs> no, yeah, sure, sure he did. Lennox, get back at him. Well, no, we finished, we finished the conversation in the, because I pick out all the gloves for my fighters, okay? Because I know which guys need the more padded gloves, like the Everlast ones, and the, and the other guy, uh, um, uh, Hawkins is wearing the Grant gloves, which are a more streamlined glove and more for a, a puncher. So just like the Reyes gloves are more for a puncher. The Everlast, are you, they look bigger uh, because they are bigger. Uh, even though they well, I would same. say, and I, and I Joe, no. Joe, I, I hate to side with Break you, but uh, I'm, I'm going to have to do it. If you can gain an advantage by making those gloves just uh, more visually appealing to the judges and make it appear that the, your your scoring shots are landing, or for whatever reason, or maybe they're just more eye catching. Well, yeah, grab that advantage in a close fight. Who knows what could help sway the judges? Yeah, uh, but, uh, but I'm surprised it's allowed. Uh, again, from my point of view, it's all about what. Uh, is it advantageous to the fighter? Is he a puncher? Does he like the the more uh, gloves that right. show the knuckles more? Feel, you can feel more listen, knuckle listen. or the more padded ones for the listen, fragile hands. I pick out my own gloves because I know how I want them to feel and I know what I'm going to do with them. And which ones did you use? Reyes? No, I used the ones that felt the best. No, which ones did you I use? I used the ones that felt the best. Reyes. Use the ones that felt right. the best. Right. Did you use Reyes? Uh, yes, I did. Yes, you did. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> I know. Because you're a puncher and those are puncher's gloves and you know it and I know it. Right, but that's not proven anything. Alex, don't let him beat you up like that. No, no. Yeah, there's no beating up. I, I, I'm a coach. I'm, yeah, I'm see, a coach. You were hitting I, after the bell. I, I, I'm going to take a point away. I dwell on these things. Okay. Let's get back I know, to the I know you. Final 30 seconds of round number two. Uh, Hitchin showing the boxing ability, able to, to land those shots and skate out of the way quickly. Yeah, he's showing the quickness. Looking out the jab. He's showing the quickness and the mobility of his punches. And uh, he's quick. He's fast, and he's throwing some good, straightforward punches to the left and the right. And moving Hawkins well able after to that. land his own jab straight ahead. Get his own scoring Break, shot in here. Final fast. second, scheduled for 10. And we are through two rounds. And here you see Hitchens throwing a jab and a good overhand right, and then he gets out of the way of a right hand. Richard Hitchens, 
Malik Hawkins, round three scheduled for 10. Again, both promoted by Mayweather Promotions. Hitchens uh, got a lot of uh, work with Floyd Mayweather. A lot of attention from the former world champion, as Heidi Antrell mentioned. And uh, you don't get that, you know, Joe Goose, you don't get the extensive training at Mayweather Gym, Floyd taking you to his house, showing you tapes of Michael Nunn. How about that? Yeah. Unless you think this is a kid with the future. And he did, by the way, show him tapes. He's shown, he mentioned, what tapes have he, has Floyd showed you? And he said, Michael Nunn. So the fighter you trained was the guy that Floyd Mayweather wanted Hitchens to watch. And that's, I, I mean, it's, I thank you, I appreciate it. But it's kind of weird because Michael Nunn was a left-hander. But, um, I understand it. Smooth as silk, though. Yeah, I guess that. I think it's. I think he loved the style. He said, "I want you to learn that." I, I mean, he, your your guy was none was so fast and so smooth and had heavy hands, and yeah. that's something to emulate, I guess. Yeah, I guess. I guess so. No, he was. He was a beautiful fighter. He was one of his kind. That's for sure. Uh, but and, and, and like I said, it's a nice compliment. And look, both of these guys are really good. They're good. They're good. But you see what happens when the action gets on the inside. They kind of tie each other up, and there's not a lot of inside work going on here. They're both kind of like. See, there's a little. There's a little Stop. work from uh, from uh, Hawkins there. But they're both like mid-range. Uh, arm's length fighters. They're, they're looking for that long, good, hard shot. And, you know, Hawkins really is a good body puncher. He should really focus on the body a bit more and, and stop trying to box with a boxer. He's a good body puncher, good good uh, jabber, but he should focus his combinations on the body and then the head. You're right. He should be so doing you can more see too, Joe. Yeah. And Joe, I, I like your analysis there, too, and I think it really shows why Hitchens was a good amateur fighter. You can see it immediately. This was, he won uh, two Golden Gloves championships in New York City, which still means something. Oh, yeah. Went on to represent Haiti in the 2016 Olympics. Lost his first bout, but you can see that, that this he has all the marks and all the, the earmarks of yeah. an outstanding amateur fighter. Absolutely, absolutely. But at, at some point, you know, you're going to fight guys that are going to force you to fight on the inside, whether you want to or not. And it's best that you kind of learn that and apply it in sparring and sometimes in the fight. Because, I mean, you, you look at an example of Jose Luis Castillo and Mayweather. I mean, he was, he, that first fight they had, he, he really got inside on Mayweather. And it was hard to get away from him. Some of those guys will force themselves on you. you and, and Mayweather was a great inside fighter, don't get me wrong. But you've got to learn that game uh, as far as Hitchens and Hawkins. They're going to have to do more to perfect that. You want to have a double-edged game there. Final seconds here in round number three. Again, Malik Hawkins out of Baltimore. Looking to wrap up some points here, but it's difficult to get to Hitchens. Back in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Brian Kenny with Lennox Lewis. Joe Goose and Heidi Andrell, Larry Hassan here with you. This is our main event here on FS1. And we've got the main event coming over on Fox. A little later on tonight, David Morell and Alantes Fox. Here, round number four. And you see right there, it is Richardson Hitchens, who is uh, outlanding Malik Hawkins, 35 to 21, throwing more punches as well. He's just more active so far in this fight. Not any damage done so far, but nice boxing by Hitchens in three rounds. Haw Hawkins needs to really, you know, pick it up a little bit more and push, push Hick Hitchens up against the ropes and make it a bit harder for him to box and move around. Hitchens able to get out of danger there from the right hand. He just moves efforts, efforts. Very good defense, natural right defense. Punch. Right hand there by Hawkins, the way to land. Yeah, I, I know what's going to Hawkins, gonna, by the way, is oh. a good friend of Trevante Davis, by the way. I just want to throw that in. He's fought on two of Davis's undercards, so if you're watching, you say, I am Baltimore. Uh, this is a uh, New York versus Baltimore matchup on top of everything else. So uh, interesting that Hawkins and Hitchens have high-level friends. Hawkins moving in nicely Stop. behind the right Don't hand. Punch. Be careful. Going to jab. No, 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 no. And now get tied up. Don't do that. No, I, I will tell you, though, Brian, I, I, I've been watching when, when uh, these two men get on the inside. What's happening is they're both chopping each other behind the back of the head a little bit. They'll throw a right hand to the body, and I'm talking in tight quarters, and then they'll chop to the back of the head, and they one one did it, and the other one retaliated, and that's been going on quite a bit here, and I'm wondering when the, when the referee, Mark Nelson, might 
catch on to that and stop them from doing that because it's one thing I really detest because it they're so vulnerable and it's so uh, dangerous to get hit in the back of the head at any point. And that's called a rabbit punch. And that's been going on a little bit when they get inside. So keep an eye on that. It's interesting. We don't see any rabbits up on the chat, but <laughs> yeah, they're on his shorts. <laughs> <laughs> Stop, don't punch. Uh, by the way, uh, active Hawkins tried to get into the Hitchens is tough to hit, and again, he is uh, he's quick and just smooth with that jab right off his shoulder. Even when he's not landing, even though Hawkins is showing some decent defense on his own. See right there, that just happened again. This is Hawkins uh, kind of looping it around the side of the head a little towards the back. See, if I were in the corner, Brian, I would definitely be yelling at the referee a little bit, encouraging yeah. him oh, yeah. to keep an eye on that. It's happening more than once in this round so far. Sometimes a byproduct of the styles of the two. I mean, the fighter is fighting dirty or anything like that. No. It's the way it's happening. Right hand there by Hitchens as we get through this round here in Minnesota. Welcome back to Minneapolis, Minnesota, here at the Armory Premier Boxing Champion. Super lightweight uh, in the ring right now. Later tonight at 8 p.m. on Fox, it is David Morrell taking on Alantas Fox uh, in a super middleweight championship bout, 12 rounds. So guys, I'll let you guys get back to the action here. Joe Lennox, what do you see? Well, I, I see a nice chess match going on here, and I see uh, uh, Hitchens you know, kind of dominating the outside right now. He's getting done what he wants to do. Uh, he seems a little bit quicker and a little bit more accurate. And I think it's incumbent upon Hawkins to, you know, change the pace of this fight. See, if he's, he's getting beat like right there. He just got beat three punches, good punches on the inside. And it was a weak retaliation. Not that he didn't try, but nothing was done. And they're tapping each other behind the head again, which I hate. And uh, I just think, uh, Hitchens is, is dominating right now since the uh, second round on. Yeah, Hawkins needs to answer the punches. Every time Hitchens throws a punch, he needs to answer the punches and throw punches back. He's just waiting and seeing what opens up for him. And then what opens up for him, Stop. he's a bit Don't too punch. late for. So he Stop. needs to create his own openings. And by creating his own openings, hit him, hit Hitchens to the body. Put him up against the ropes. Be a little bit more rough with him. He needs to get rough in there if he wants to win this fight. Get a, an indication of scoring and go to Larry Hazard. Larry, how do you have it so far? Okay, okay, Brian. I have uh, Hitchens ahead, 39 37. And Brian, you pointed out something very important. You, I'm getting to see Hitchens amateur pedig pedigree. And, and we all know that styles make fights. That's why this fight is really not that exciting because these guys have similar styles, although Hitchens is a little bit more crafty and he's, he's really taking charge. Um, the last three rounds, I've given it to him, and I have him ahead, 39, 37. And Hitchens is hit, hit. crafty, and now you see him up in the ante here, like throwing that nice combination. Hitchens is throwing some good punches, quick punches. He's fast, and he's got good mobility, so he's not there to receive any punches coming back. Exactly right. By the way, in the next round, we're, we're kind of we're, we're running out of time here. In the next round, I'm going to briefly revisit the scoring of the previous fight. For those of you who are wondering, right? I, I know there's a lot of fans that do care, and all these fights matter. So uh, I'm not looking past. Okay, that's a four rounder. It doesn't matter. We're going to go back to the scoring. We just haven't had time I'm trying to pay attention to the fight that's right in front of us. But uh, some puzzling scoring, and we'll go back to it in the next round when we have a little bit of time. Hitchens is the only boxer in, in this fight that's thrown a double jab and it's worked for him. So, uh, you know, if he keeps it up, it's going to be working even better for him. He's going to be able to throw, uh, land that right hand. He grabbed him. He's able to move his head out of the way, too. As Hawkins able to throw that hook, but Hitchens elusive and crafty. There he has it. Hey! That's the end of this round. Brian Kenny back with Lennox Lewis and uh, Joe Goosen. I just want to briefly go back to the previous fight and the puzzling scoring. Shuri Mamatovich and Chino Hill, fellas, uh, staring at it, saying, how did this, how did they possibly get a draw out of this with a knockdown? Well, one, no judge scored the knockdown round 10-8. So what Larry Hazard said did carry the day with the judges, even though I presume they're not listening to us. But they all had a 10-9 in favor 
of Chino Hill. So they did. They do not hear us. That's not allowed. So it was all three had a 10-9, even with a knockdown, which is fine. We're not saying anything there. But the other part was two of the judges gave the first round to Chino Hill. Oh. Therefore, we have a draw. And Joe Goose, and you're piping in already. I'm, I, we just didn't believe that yeah. Hill was winning that first round. No. But I'm not scoring it. I'm not sure you're right. No, listen. I, I hit the, first off. Uh, he got, Chino Hill got hit with several right hands in the first round, and I don't remember anything of consequence that he did to win that round. You know, uh, yeah, I may be yes. wrong, but that's the way I look at it, and that's the way uh, Larry Hazard had it scored as well. But we, again, we're surprised by it. Again, uh, but not outraged. But that right. surprise was competitive. Well, uh, uh, I, so I, we I, just want to revisit because, I, again, I mentioned all these fights do matter. And even though, hey, it's a four-rounder, so what? Move on. We're, we're watching live Brian, right Brian, now. We're Latin number last, six. But it is thing, important to throw it in. Last thing I want to throw in, I yeah, talked to the referee after the fight. I went over to Harvey Dock, and Harvey Dock was as confused as we were. And he goes, I can't That's see it. Guys. I can't see another round in which uh, Chino Hill won besides the third round where he knocked down uh, so, you know, well, yeah. we were all a little confused, but there's the, there's the, uh, the we solved the problem. Right. It was the first Jump round back. given to Hill, and that's, there and came the draw. There you the go. Good thing there was no I don't losers. know if we fixed the glitch, as they say. Right. But, uh, right. Yeah, but there's no losers in this fight. No <laughs> losers. That's right. <laughs> you always right. look at that. Final minute now. It took us a while to explain that, unravel it, but final right. minute. And this one is going uh, to form, really, where Richardson Hitchens is just a little too elusive. <laughs> against Malik Hawkins. Yeah, I, I, I like Hawkins is I, just going to have to change the equation here. I, I really like it in his favor. I really like Hitchens' style. I mean, I, I think he's very athletic. I think he's got he's really uh, got good vision in there. He reacts well. He's obviously following the game plan. And I, I know that his trainers encouraged him when he was stuck on the ropes in the last round to do some body work, and he turned around to his corner and yelled at him and said he's holding, you know. So I, I know he probably wants to work a little bit more on the inside, but uh, he feels he's being held on the inside and can't get that done. Well, Joe, you've pointed out from the very start, it's not his thing, you know. Yeah. As Manny Machado once said, it's not his cup of tea. Right? Right. That's not what he does. True. But Hitchens putting on a nice display of boxing here in Minnesota. That is Richardson Hitchens right now. Lennox Lewis, uh, you are pointing out the double jab from Hitchens. And it, even when it comes out one at a time, it's very effective in this fight. Yeah, Hitchens is doing what he can do uh, in this fight. He's doing anything he wants to do, I mean. And uh, this is the time where you can work on different stuff. I mean, you, you, you're hitting the guy with a double jab. Now it's time to work off that double jab and throw some right hands and some body shots. Hawkins moving in right now and trying to press the action, but again, you can see in the copy box numbers, that, that's a significant number. I mean, 57 to 11 in jabs landed for Hitchens, and that is what we believe is winning the fight for Hitchens so yeah, far. That, that he's been controlling the fight with that jab, there's no doubt about it. And right now, Hawkins is trying to put some pressure on him. The, the action came into our corner here, and he actually got in a couple of good body shots, but Hitchens has really got good radar. He sees something coming, and he's either ducking it, slipping it, blocking it. He's uh, he's really sharp that way. So he's making life really difficult for Malik Hawkins. But Hawkins, Hawkins is making it easy for him because he's just holding his hands up there, and uh, Hitchens is just hitting what he can see. Yeah, he is at this point. He's he's reverting to that right now. He tried to go, you know, uh, match him skill for skill early in the fight, but he was, he was just getting outspeeded and out hustled, and now he's trying something different. He's putting the earmuffs on, trying to lock him down and get something done. But I doubt if that's going to work either. Yeah, well, it's not working nice right, right now. Nice right hand to the body. Nice right hand to the body. Hawkins there briefly, but you know, even to get very elemental into this, Lennox, you can see, oh, nice right hand here from Hitchens. Uh, there's there's no wind up or clutch at all from Hitchens with his punches. It comes, they come immediately right off that shoulder. Yeah. It seems to be that really increases his. It's not just speed, Lennox. Maybe you could, you know, explain that a little bit. Why he's able to get those shots off so clean. Well, he's, he's able to get the shots off because they're straight shots. It's not a wind up shot, and it's it's coming from your chin straight to the other guy's chin, and that's that's what 
that's what a lot of boxers don't realize. When they're throwing a jab, it's just gonna come straight. If it, if it comes with a, any hesitation, then you're taking the speed off. See, there, there's a great example of Hitchens, uh, when I was talking about his radar. Uh, Hawkins jumps in with a big left hook. Hitchens slides under and out, and Hawkins falls to the ground, uh, hitting the bottom rope. It's just a great defensive move. He's, he's just too athletic, too quick right now for Hawkins, and Hawkins is going to have to do something drastic to change the course of this fight right now, and backing up isn't going to be the move. And you can tell he's able to get a little closer now, he slaps him with a hook as well, and finishing up with a combination, he's starting to really tag Hawkins now. Yeah. Nicely done by Richardson Hitchens here in round seven. Good work by Hitchens in that round. He starts to take control and beginning to assert himself and lay a little more punishment on Malik Hawkins. This was just a slip, but Hitchinson taking over in this fight. Yes, the radar is working. Yep. <laughs> Back in Minneapolis, Minnesota, Brian Kenny, Lennox Lewis, Joe Goosen, Heidi Androl, and Larry Hazard. Right, here's Round a, number eight scheduled for ten. Here's a little right, right hand, jump. right right hand by Hitchens. He rolls with the counter and then dra drops his little right hand on Hawkins. Stop! Don't so punch. Hawkins tried to counter right. the right hand from Hitchens. Hitchens Aaron, slipped you. it, came back with his right hand. It's a standard taught move in the gyms, but boy, he pulled that off perfectly. Hitchens is is smooth, and I and I just want to underline two key words that you guys used in that last round. Joe, you said the radar yeah. was on for Hitchens. I think yes. his radar is beautiful. You can see things coming. You can sense danger. And the other that Lennox mentioned was the wind up. Right. I was trying to think of the right word. No wind up in the punches. Look at that jab. It just pops right off the shoulder. So you have very little time to react to it. And most times you're eating that jab, and that's happened throughout this fight. Yeah, especially with Hawkins. Hawkins keeps his head in one level all the time straight. He needs to move it side to side so he's not getting hit with those punches. Again, we uh, lauded the match. The fighters said there was a lot to gain, and if Hitchens does indeed complete the win here tonight, that's a nice win against uh, Malik Hawkins, and something where he also had to learn and, and get over a decent opponent, and you can see he's getting better round after round. Absolutely, because last round, when he Stop, landed a, a couple of shots to the head, he actually finished the combination to the body and landed a, a right, left, and another left to the body. So he's, he's starting to see uh, Hitchens is opportunistic when it comes to the body shots. He's not forcing body shots. It's just when they present themselves, uh, when he slows a guy down like he has Hawkins, then he'll start landing on them. Boy, they're beautiful when he throws them. Um, so he, he's got the ability to do it. I, I think it's a very impressive performance by Hitchens tonight. Uh, and I think Hawkins is probably really surprised that that's Hitchens not, is performing as well as he is tonight. He's, he's moving forward, that's for sure. Final minute of round eight. And again, Hitchens would be a tough out for anyone. I mean, just that uh, his ability to jab and his defense uh, will make him a tough out for anybody, no matter how talented or experienced they are. Here's that combination that uh, I, I was probably talking about. There's that one two hook, right hand. Um, let's see if he goes down to the body here. Another right hand. There's four or five shots. Yeah, but it was uh, something similar to that, but he finished up with the body work. Final seconds here in round number eight. And Hitchens uh, nicely putting his foot down on the accelerator, increasing the activity rate against Malik Hawkins through eight. And there is Richardson Hitchens, 12-0 out of Brooklyn, New York. Started boxing in Brooklyn at the Teddy Atlas Cops and Kids Gym, trained early by Oriano Sosa. And he has put on a beautiful boxing performance here now, as it is Mayweather versus Mayweather. Hitchens and Malik Hawkins both promoted by Floyd Mayweather and Leonard Ellerby. And round number nine, scheduled for 10. And I mentioned, fellas, he's put the foot on the accelerator. Hitchens now landing more than 20 punches in two of the last three rounds. And conversely, Hawkins has let to, uh, yet to land more than nine punches in any single round. I mean, we kind of see how this is going, but let's revisit with Larry Hazard. Larry, how do you have it? 
Uh, right now I have it 79, 73 for Hitchens, Brian. I haven't given Hawkins a round since round one. Hitchens is clearly a more masterful boxer. And I see a little bit of Floyd Mayweather's defense yeah. there, too. You know, he doesn't, you know, he doesn't waste space. He's a good counterpuncher, and he's in total charge of this fight. So half from my head, 79, 73. Well put, Larry, right, yeah, you word crafty earlier Joe used radar Break the just, that's that oh, yeah. sense of space and his vision is just outstanding his reflex is also uh, clearly world class yeah and, and, and give credit to his corner Leonard Wilson uh, Tim uh, Dispress and especially my buddy Hervey uh, Estrada who's in the corner they did a great job he's well conditioned he looks as fresh as he did in the first and second round right now I'm talking about Hitchens Great job uh, on their part because, uh, you know, uh, Malik Hawkins is his 18-1 uh, uh, and 11 knockouts. So he's, he's a very, very credible opponent. And there's a reason why Mayweather signed him, and he's with uh, that promotional company. you got to be good to play with that team. So he's beating a really good guy right now, uh, uh, Richardson Hitchens. Is. Hitchens just threw a good left-right. And it caught Hawkins on the chin, but Hawkins just ate it up and he came back with his good combination. He's trying to get Hitchens up against the ropes to do something, but when, once he's got him up against the ropes, he's not he's not leaving no punching room for himself. So he needs to step back and throw some punches. It's just well, Hawkins is trying. Trying. It's not it's not like a, he's not in there to win it. So look, he's trying. He's pressing forward, but most of the time when he goes to press forward, Hitchens is simply not physically there for him. He's much too elusive. Yeah, and and, and the corner, you know, Dave Sewell in the corner of Malik Hawkins, I, I guarantee, because he's told him you need a knockout, and if you, you know, it's, it's, it's time to you know pull the trigger on this and and, and try to land that big punch. I don't know if he's going to be able to do it. It's doubtful, but he needs to uh, really win by. If he's going to win this, he needs a knock. Final seconds, round nine. Final round coming up here in Minneapolis. Final round, and in the corner for Malik Hawkins. His team saying, you need a knockout. Yeah. Bring everything you have left into this round. Yeah, that much is clear. Yeah. It's just very difficult okay, here we go. to find Richardson Hitchens and locate his head, Joe Goosen, yeah. and strike it. It's very difficult to do that. Head or body, he's listening. You know, I've seen it. Hitchens uh, have a, a, a left hook to the body thrown on by Hawkins while he was on the roof. He actually just inched his way back a little bit. The punch missed him, and he spun out. I mean, he made a miss, a left hook that looked like he, he was a no-brainer that was going to land. He's, he's been that evasive tonight, all the while still being in range to counter and land his own stuff. So yeah. he's fought a perfect fight. I agree with you. I mean, he's moved around the ring really well, and he hasn't been hit, and it's hard to catch him. And, you, you know, he's obviously gone up against guys that have tried to corner him, and he's done a great job getting out of the corner. Break. And now Hitchens doing some work on the inside, and that would be the next level. Certainly, if Hitchens was able to do some good inside work as well, because he is again extremely elusive and outstanding defensively. The next level to make some hay in the top ten at 140 pounds would be to add some offensive and inside punching as well. Correct. And see, and if you aren't uh, uh, inclined to you know be very active with the inside game once you get there you gotta have, you gotta bring some power to the game and right now Hitchens has only got five knockouts in his 12 wins so he's got to improve on that you know I think he will improve on that right I got it Stop! Be careful, guys. Hey, hey, hey. Well, we welcome everybody watching on Fox. Brian Kenny here with Lennox Lewis, Joe Goosen, Heidi Andrew and Larry Hazard, Minneapolis, Minnesota. And you're watching some bonus coverage here. Final minute of the final round between Richardson Hitchens in the black trunks, Malik Hawkins, who's throwing those shots in the blue trunks. Final round between these two fighters uh, who are both promoted by Floyd Mayweather, former world champion. The main event coming up next, a little later on tonight, David Burrell and Alantez Fox. We've had uh, spirited 10 rounds of action here.
and an outstanding boxing performance, Joe and Lennox, from Richardson Hitchens. Yeah, Hitchens, Hitch, Hitchens is really boxed Great. well in this fight. He's, he's boxed from distance. He showed his speed and movement, and he's got a good left-right combination. And I say, if it ain't broken, don't fix it. Keep it up. Well, Hitchens isn't even breathing hard, guys. You know what I mean? It's just easy. There's a jab right hand. Smooth from Hitchens. Yeah, it's pretty much been this way the whole ultra. night. And a great 10 rounds by Hitchens. Good boxing performance there. Richardson Hitchens looking to stay unbeaten. We're back to the decision after this. By the way, for those of you wanting to watch the rest of tonight's fight action, you can switch over to Fox if you're on FS1 right now. Coming up next on FS1, we've got an international friendly soccer match with Team USA. There you're looking at Richardson Hitchens, who wrapped things up nicely. Beautiful boxing night for Hitchens against Malik Hawkins, who only had one pro loss coming into this fight. Let's get the decision and go to the ring and Miguel Flores. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of boxing, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge John Moreno scores the contest 97 to 93. Judge Jesse Reyes saw it 100 to 90. And Judge Scott Erickson saw it 96 to 94. All three judges in favor of your winner by unanimous decision. And still undefeated, Richardson Hitchens.